Hello. I'm going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate the steps in recreating a coffee cup um, and using various techniques. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, placing your coffee cup on a brand new layer. Um, this is the original and we're going to go ahead and create we're going to trace over this rather than drawing it freehand uh, and so to do that I'm going to go ahead and use layers at the bottom of your palette on the right hand side you'll see um, I'll go ahead and close this so you can see it uh, you should see some layers if you don't uh, go up to window and if you want to you go to workspace and go over to the right and go sit and go ahead and select reset essentials reset essentials will go ahead and on the right hand side you'll see all of the various palettes uh, right now I have libraries that's showing up I don't want libraries I'm gonna go ahead and deselect it so that I can see what I'm doing here okay layers is close to the bottom uh, on the right hand side it's the second one up from the bottom uh, looks like two pieces of paper or two layers I'm going to select that one and open up this palette my computer is a little bit slow so it takes a little time and I double click so it turned it off so here we go uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer and I'm going to go ahead and name this layer uh, this next this layer that I'm going to name I'm going to click on the word layer 2 and I'm going to name this uh, saucer. And as we go along, I'm going to go ahead and create uh, more layers as we continue going on. So right now I'm going to lock, um, I'll leave that one there, but I want to lock this original layer uh, so that I don't delete it or change it or anything. And I make a habit of that uh, ongoing. Okay. If you want to, you can move the layer. You can click on it and it hides it. Um, so let's do that so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to the left-hand side where my tools are. And you'll see one with either a um, rectangle in it, a rounded rectangle tool, ellipse tool, polygon tool, star tool, or flare tool um, as an option. Now, so it, it doesn't always show the same one every time. Uh, the last one I used was an ellipse tool, so that's why it's there. Otherwise, yours might show the rectangle tool. Uh, go ahead and select the, and if you, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the tool itself, you'll see a little triangle that indicates that there are more tools that are hidden inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and select this uh, ellipse tool. And I'm going to start from the center of my, um, or fairly close to the center of my saucer. I'm going to click and I'm going to go ahead and uh, holding the Alt key, I'm going to drag, which creates it from the center out. And that's sometimes rather nice so that I can determine what overall size I need to make. Now, as soon as I released, it filled that saucer with a white fill. So I'm going to over on the bottom left hand corner of your toolbox, you'll see a white square. In my case, it's a white square and a black uh, outline stroke. I'm going to click on that white square and bring it to the foreground. And then I'm going to go ahead, just below that is a diagonal, and I'm going to delete the fill of that. Um, the sh of that shape, the, the elliptical shape oval that I made. Now it's not quite the right size, so I want to change it. At the top of the toolbox, you'll see a selection tool. And if I select the black arrow, which is uh, that's the main selection tool, I can change this overall size just a bit. I can increase pull on the anchor points, those little squares are called anchor points, and I can increase the size of this uh, oval. And that's fairly close. If I want to be, um, if I 
I want to, I can select the white arrow and just manipulate one item at a time. The direct selection tool is the white arrow. This is good enough. I'm now going to try and uh, fill the inside of the saucer. Now it's not going to match perfectly, uh, but uh, in order to get the color that we would like, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this color guide up here on the right. Uh, in order to get the color in the left hand side, you'll see in the toolbox, you'll see something that looks like an eyedropper, which is quite a ways down or just above your fill and stroke, maybe about the fourth one up. And there are tools inside there as well. One is a measuring tool, which I like to use sometimes as well. If you click in, uh, in this area, it will select the color of the original saucer and it will fill that with the color that you chose. Now when you do that, it's a little bit awkward because now I can't see uh, the um, saucer that was underneath it. So I'm gonna do something. Um, because I already have the shape that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up just a bit so that I can uh, add other colors to this saucer to try and get the shading that's necessary. Uh, if you go to the far right hand side where the palettes are, click on the gradient uh, palette and when you do that, uh, it takes just a few seconds and you'll see that there are two different types. If you look at the type, the box is empty but I'm going to go ahead and select in this case a uh, radial uh, gradient. The radial gradient, uh-oh, I'm doing something that uh, I don't want to do. I don't want to apply this gradient to the stroke. I want this to apply to the fill. So I want to make sure that I apply it there. Um, so now it's applying that gradient to the fill. Probably good that that happened because maybe one of you will have that problem as well. Um, all right, so. Uh, I don't have that color here right now. If you look at the gradient slider on the left hand side, you will see it's kind of like really light and then it gets dark on the right. You can shift that over if you want to. You can also do it on here as well. I don't want the uh, lighting to be in the very middle of there. And by the way, uh, one of the things you can do because it's hiding uh, my tool, I can click on the gradient tab at the top and I can drag that down and away. And then since I'm not using uh, the stroke or the transparency, I'm going to hide these and put them back in there. So the only item that I have now is the gradient uh, palette. I'm going to go ahead and choose a few more shades and maybe I can get this to be a little closer, although it's not too bad. So in the eyedropper uh, on the far left hand side, I'm going to click there. I'm going to select maybe, that's still a little bit light over there. I do want a lighter color. And when I do that, I can go ahead and drag that down to um, the gradient slider. Um, all right, that didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. What should happen is that I have, anyway, moving on, on the far left hand side, I have the gradient tool in the toolbox. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to move this. Now you can click on this, this one item here, the black, and move the center or the position. You can extend this out a little bit further as well. Now it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, more like the shading of the saucer that's there. Great, it's coming. We're doing a little bit better. I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, I, do, I will show you a few other tricks uh, later on as well. Okay, and you will see that there are little sliders on here. Those are the ones, if you had more than one color, you could move this, by the way, right here instead of over on the left. So eh, that's pretty good. 
that's fairly good. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, going back to the um, toolbox, I'm going to go ahead and move this down and into position that's fairly close to the uh, original. Um, good, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and close this for just now and go to my layers palette. And I'm now going to create a new layer and down at the bottom of the palette and then go ahead and double click on layer three and name this, let's name this the cup itself. All right, I'm gonna hide this one because it's obscuring my vision of the cup itself. And I'm also going to lock it. You'll notice that when this layer is selected, it's kind of a, a blue color, and that's what I want. All right, so I'm working on the cup. Now there are different ways of doing this. We're now going to become uh, a little familiar with using the pen tool. And uh, before I go too far, I want to go ahead and select this tool <clears throat> and make sure that there isn't any fill. I'm going to show you, though, I, and I tend to do things the same way because that's how I was taught, uh, but there are there is more than one way. <clears throat> if you look up here, when I have this tool select, selected, uh, you will also see that there's a fill and a stroke here. So if you want to and you select that, you can make it white or any color that you want. Right now there's no fill and no stroke. I mean a black stroke to this. I'm going to select the pen tool. With the pen tool, we're going to <clears throat> try to recreate the shape of the cup. Uh, first of all, I'm going to give you a shortcut key. And I, I'd like to see the rulers on here so that I can uh, uh, use them just a bit. The shortcut is Command-R, which will put place rulers on top and on the side of your screen. And the reason for this is it's good because now I can see, oh, one, two, three, it's about four inches wide. So I can see the, the width of the cup, but that's not the reason I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> create an oval to start with. Uh, and this oval is going to be the, um, the top portion of the cup. So I'm going to again hold the Alt key as I drag and try to get it the same width as the cup itself. All right, that's good. Uh, now, instead of the black selection, black arrow, black selection tool, I'm getting the white direct selection tool. And in there, I can go ahead and drag this up. Now, see how that actually distorted the uh, item itself. So I'm going to undo by doing Command Z. And if I get the white, I mean, sorry, the black arrow, the selection tool, if I move this, it now keeps it in proportion. So the, the direct selection tool manipulates just that one anchor. But this is a little bit more accurate than using that other, the direct selection tool. Okay, this is excellent. I'm going to go over to the ruler on the left-hand side, click inside the ruler, bring it over, and line it up with the center of that. <clears throat> and, I, and I'll explain what, why we're doing this. Um, okay, the next item I'm going to go to is the pen tool. Again, the pen tool has... If you see, the pen tool is about the third one down. If you have a double uh, line of tools on the left-hand side. And you'll notice that inside the pen tool, you have four different tools. The pen tool, the add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and the anchor point tool. They're all great tools. I'm going to click on just the anchor tool. I'm going to start with the far left-hand top corner of the this drawing and I'm going to start where it lines up with with uh, the oval. Now with the pen tool uh, if you aren't familiar with it it's it's a little bit different in handling it's not like using a regular pen where you 
push down and you draw a line? No. Uh, this is where you would click once, release the mouse, and then coming down. Oh boy. All right. Before I go too far, let me just make sure that we have a stroke. And I'm going to go ahead and get a black stroke so that we can see what uh, uh, I'm doing here. So I've got a black stroke on there so I can see. Back to the anchor point. And I'm going to go ahead and go down one more time. And I'm going to go down and select just about uh, here. I'm going to go ahead and drag. I should be able to, as I click and drag to the right, that's the direction I'm going. And normally that's the direction I create the line. I try to match the shape, uh, the outside shape of the cup. I'm going to release the mouse, and now it creates that stroke that goes around. Now, if I continue, you'll see this little, uh, almost like a green line shape. It's good, but uh, in this case, it won't help us. So we're going to click, because we're going to continue on with the drawing. I'm going to click on the anchor, and then I'm going to go to the very center point of there at the bottom, and do the same thing, trying to match the angle of the line, the first line that I did, so that it doesn't create an odd, awkward, uh, um, jagged edge. Now, I clicked and dragged to the right. Once I get to the middle, I'm going to click on the anchor that deletes the handle, which is to the right. Okay, I'm going to go straight up, and you'll see that uh, when I get close, it creates a horizontal line to the other anchor point. So I'm going to go ahead and click right there, and then I'm going to go uh, to the left. I'm not clicking and dragging because I'm making a straight line. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go all to the far left and finish the shape that I started. This is one shape. This is one half of the cup not going up to the top, but just the, the half. All right, we're doing well. I'm going to go ahead and go to the selection tool at the top left-hand corner. I'm going to select that. I'm going to go ahead and, in this case, I'm going to uh, click on the line. I could select another portion of the line. It wouldn't really matter, but it's the, the line itself. And without letting go, I'm going to click the Alt key, which is going to give me the option of copying this shape. But I'm also going to click on the Shift key at the same time. Looks like my computer is saying, what in the world are you doing? I hope it doesn't freeze on me here. So uh, maybe I should release and let's see what happens. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so I'm holding the Alt key, and as I drag to the right, if I hold the Shift key, it keeps me from moving up and down. I'm going to go and drag it to where the top left-hand corner lines up with the um, far top right corner of the original design that I made. I'm going to release with my right hand on the mouse first, and then I release with my left hand. This made a copy of the original and dragged it to the right. Now, it's not quite what I want, but what I want to do, so if this is a uniform shape, I want to make sure the right side is the same as the left. Now I can go up to the word Object, Transform, Reflect, so Object, Transform, Reflect, and when I do that, it brings up a palette, and I have 90 degrees. If I preview this, it flips that, and it makes it so that it, it joins there. Until I click OK, it doesn't take effect. I'm going to say OK. So it looks like this cup isn't perfectly symmetrical, just maybe the angle or whatever it is. I'm going to click OK. This is not bad. If I want to, to make it a little bit better, I can go ahead and drag that. Now, when I did that, it with its main selection tool, 
it uh, moved the whole thing. Let me take the white direct selection tool, go to the far right hand corner, and clicking twice, you have to click on the anchor point and then click again, then dragging it to the right, I am now changing this so that it's a little closer to what I want. Okay, and it looks like uh, this this affected the original when I did the other, it affected the other one as well, which isn't too good. So I'm going to go and bring that down so that those line up. This is much better. Uh, I would say that ex that's acceptable. But now we have two halves. In order to join these two halves, so if I want to go to the layer and show you what I'm doing here, I'm going to go to the far right hand corner, click on the layers palette, and clicking once, I'm going to hide the saucer and show you the shape that we've created. Okay, so back to the saucer, this blue layer. All right, I'm going to hide the layers. Uh, we are going to join these two. Now, uh, Illustrator has a new, I'm not sure how new feature, but uh, one that you can combine two object objects and make them as one. Almost like getting married. Okay, well, probably shouldn't have said that. Moving this one, I've selected the one on the right. I'm going to click the arrow key to the left just a bit so that it overlaps. If it doesn't overlap, this tool that I'm going to use won't work. I've tried it the other way and I said, what's going on? So, okay, we're going to go ahead and use a tool called the blob. Uh, I'm sorry, not the blob tool. Uh, <laughs> First, I need to select both objects. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Select both objects, and on the far left-hand left side in the toolbox, it's called the Shape Builder Tool. If you click on that tool, you'll see that as you uh, bring your mouse over the object itself, it has a little checkered pattern. If you click and you drag to the right, it will fill both of them, and it now created one shape out of those two shapes. Very nice. I could also do that for the top portion if I wanted to, but that top portion I might want to do, I think I will use it later on. That's great. That's exactly what I want. Now if I go back to my layers, I'm going to click on the uh, layer palette, and I want to see the original. This is the original that I have. Okay, well now let's use our uh, gradient tool uh, to go ahead and fill this portion here with that color that we need. So, using the eyedropper again, let's go ahead and select this shade here and then go to the go to the gradient um, palette, which I'm not seeing right now. I probably hid it uh, from view. I'm going to go and find the gradient, which is right here. So if you don't see the palettes on the right, just go ahead and click on them. It will bring them up, and then you can work with them. So that uh, shade here, um, I want to go ahead and create that shape. It's picking up the, the shading that I had from the previous time. Um, quite comfortable with that. Uh, what we can do though is we can move this so that we can see it again. And we can move it back later and get that lighting of the saucer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the eyedropper tool once more, select a portion of it there, and if you see it on the on the gradient palette that's called the fill, drag that shade down to the uh, down to the gradient slider, and that uh, that applies that color to the uh, gradient. I mean, the shape that we created. I'd like to have a little bit more. I'm going to bring the slider over a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the move tool. Maybe move it back up into position. And in this case, I'm going to go to the left-hand side where the gradient tool is. And instead of trying to drag it from there, I'm going to say, oh, you know, my lighting is from down here. I'm going to click 
and drag and go up. All right. I can do that if I click and drag from the top, go the other way, then it's going to change the angle of that. I don't want the lighting at the top right. Most of my lighting is actually in the left-hand corner here. Uh, that might be a little bit too far. And if I click on here, I can move the slider over just a bit to increase that if I want to. That's not too bad the way it was. All right, I've got this shape. And that's fairly good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move this down just a bit out of the way. I'm going to bring, them up, bring up my palette. <clears throat> I mean, my layers palette. I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, the cup and lock it. I'm going to go to create a new item. I'm going to create the, um, the handle itself. So go ahead and create a new layer in here. I'm going to go ahead and double click and call this the handle. All right, this is a little bit challenging, but we can do it. Okay, we can go ahead and again, I'm going to move this. Uh, no, I'm just going to hide this one for now. Layers are fine. It will take us a little bit of time to create this. All right, back to the pen tool that we've learned a little bit of how to use. Click on the pen tool. Oh, before we do that, let's make sure we have a stroke. I want a black stroke and I want no fill. So I'm going to select the diagonal here. Okay, starting with the, with the uh, pen tool, I'm going to start from uh, this point here. And I'm going to click at this intersection right here. Uh, this is, I'm going to go with the pen tool, you want to go as far as you can uh, and still be able to uh, to recreate the actual shape of the object. If I go way down here and try it, I probably won't get the curve. Uh, uh, so I'm going to go a little bit around this curve. And as I do so, I'm going to drag to the right. And as I do that, you can see the handles that I'm creating with the shape. When I release, uh, unfortunately, uh, it created another anchor point because I released and then must have clicked. So I'm going to do undo, which the shortcut is command Z. So please learn that, that shortcut key, which will help you immensely. Now, if I continue going, you can see that the, uh, it, I'm not clicking, but it's saying if I go to here, this is where the shape will continue going, which is rather nice because it makes a nice continuous path. So I could do that. I could use that. I could just click here. And now I have a straight line because I didn't click and drag. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this time. I'm going to go further. I'm going to click and drag and watch as I do this to see if I can match that curve. Now, if I go too far like this, you can see how that intersection doesn't line up. That's not good. So you want to make sure as you do this, you're, you line up those lines. Now, if I continue, I have a problem. So I'm going to click on this anchor point in the middle, and that deletes the last handle. I'm going to go and to here, and I'm going to just click and drag a little bit to the right, because I can see there's a little bit of a curve going down. I'm going to go up, click on the anchor point. I'm going to go up to here. And I'm going to curve it just a little bit that direction. Click on the anchor point. Um, go to there. Click. And I'm watching. I click and drag. And you can see the curve that's created. Now, if I continue, I can go to there. That's exactly what I want. Click to here. Create this curve. I want to make sure that it's it's nicely curved. That's good. Uh, click on this anchor point and then come down to this portion here and watch that it's not too long so that those lines line up. Click on the anchor point, go up to here, and let go. 
I have now created the shape of the handle, and now I need to do <coughs> the, use the gradient tool. Again, I think I hid this gradient, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this up a little bit so I, you can see it. So I have no fill. If I go up to the uh, gradient itself, I can click on this one here, which is one that I had before. Again, I can use the eyedropper. I can move things around. I'm going to go ahead and use the colors that are in there, uh, but change the angle because the lighting was at the top of the uh, handle. So get, going to the toolbox, uh, gradient tool, I'm going to select that, and I'm going to click from here and drag down and, because the lighting of the original was from the top. All right, this isn't too bad. I'm going to click off of this and just look at the original and see how it compares. You can see where the lighting is at the top. This isn't a perfect match. Uh, I would probably do a little bit more, but we're doing okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back into position. And I probably should have just used undo instead of clicking and dragging it. But you can click and drag it back into position. Now you'll see something that I that uh, you don't want. In this case, I have a fill and a black stroke. And the original does not have a black stroke going around it. To make it look more natural, which I highly recommend, I want you to um, delete that stroke. In order to delete that stroke, uh, you will go up to your strokes uh, up here or down below in your toolbox. Select the stroke itself so that it comes to the foreground and then click None so there isn't a stroke that goes around the object. All right, this is looking more natural than what we had. Excellent, we're doing great. Okay, we have now, go back to our layers, and let's try and get that uh, coffee color in there. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to lock this one, hide the handle, and with a new layer, let's double click on the layer, and we're going to call this coffee. All right, excellent. Okay, coffee isn't too hard to do. It looks like it's just a little bit of an oval, uh, although it comes to a little bit of a uh, shape there. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to hide this one and move this out of the way as well. Okay, I'm on the coffee layer. I've locked the other ones. I'm going to go to the uh, oval tool, starting from the center. And so you can see when I get to the center, it's showing me a, a, a vertical line. And that helps me to know it's fairly close to center. I'm going to go ahead and click the Alt key as I drag to make this shape. And you can see that it's a little bit, yeah, not quite matching. I want to make it the, the color of the inside. I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, well, let's first start with the um, selection tool instead of the direct selection tool so that I can get that. That's pretty good. All right, definitely this is not matching the color. I'm going to move this down just a little bit here. I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool again, select that color, filled it up fairly quickly. That's, that's pretty dark uh, coffee. Um, I could possibly give it some more lighting if I want to um, by using the gradient and You'll notice that that's there. We can drag that down to the line. And now I have white, which I don't want. Uh, if I want to delete a color, which I don't want white, so if I go to there, I select it, and I hit this little trash can, that deletes that. Um, that one again, I'm going to delete that one. Uh, it's OK. It's getting there. Um, I'm going to move that down so it's a little bit darker, maybe. Although, you know what, it looks like I probably should have this color over here as well. So I'm going to go and bring that, bring a slider down. Uh, I mean, the gradient slider down to the gradient slider so I get some 
some lighting over there. That's pretty good. Okay, not quite what I want. Bring that over. That's right in the middle. And what I really want is this switched around. Let's try something else. Yeah, you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and delete that middle one and leave it dark on the outside. Leave it in there. Not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and move it up. There are a few other things I could do, but let's leave it as is. All right. Okay, just get that coffee lined up inside there. Let's see what we have. <clears throat> Doing pretty well. Um, but I think we have uh, we have the stain that we need to put inside of here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I look and see what we have, this is what we have so far. By clicking on the eyes here, it shows us uh, what <clears throat> all that we've made. Now I made this original uh, rim at the top. And maybe I uh, the inside of the cup itself. So maybe I should call that <coughs> and double click on there and call it uh, inside cup, inside of the cup. But I don't want that long, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I lock that layer. I want to go to the layer that has the um, cup itself right there. I'm going to unlock that one because what I want to do is I want to get this um, oval that I created before. And I'm going to go ahead and create that as a separate layer. So this oval that I created before, uh, I'm going to do something called, um, it's, it's copying and pasting. But the shortcut is Command X. Command X means to cut. So I'm going to do Command X, which cuts that. I'm going to go up to this layer at the top. First, first I'm going to lock the cup layer. And instead of paste, which is Command V, which most of you are familiar with, I probably I will assume that, <clears throat> I want you to go Command F, which is paste in front. OK. So that places that object exactly where it was taken out of. Wonderful. All right, now I can hide some of this other material. And I want to get the color that's on the inside here. OK, we're going to go ahead and use the eyedropper tool one more time. Use a lot of the eyedropper tool in here. And that's fine. It's just going to be so that I can fill that just a bit. Now, there's a little bit of a problem. You can see where the coffee is hidden. That's not what I want. I want the coffee to be visible. In order to do that, what we can do here <clears throat> is we can click on this layer, click and drag, and drag it just be in the Layers palette, drag it just between coffee and handle, which means it's below the coffee. When I do that, it allows the coffee to be on the, uh, on the surface there, on the top. That's great. Yep, that's what I want. OK, so I've shown you that uh, the layer order will allow you to uh, do quite a bit here. I'm going to highlight the coffee. I'm going to create a new layer. I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm going to create a new layer, and this I'm going to call the stain. So this is the coffee stain, which is on the inside of the cup itself. OK. And I do need to see this, so I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, these other items here, but not the one I'm working on. If I hide this one, and I try and go over there, you'll see that there's a pencil with a, a circle with a diagonal. It means I can't work on there. Even though it's unlocked, I can't work on there. So you want to make sure that it's visible. Then you can work on that layer. <clears throat> OK, on the layer that's called the stain, 
I'm going to go ahead and now using the pen tool, try to recreate this stain so that it looks a little bit more authentic. So I'm going to start from this side here. I'm going to go around. I'm going to click and drag, create that shape. Uh, looks like I have a fill. So I'm going to delete that fill for just now. I actually want it to have a stroke. So let's make this, the stroke show up. All right. Now continuing around, I'm going to go and click there. I'm going to go to this one spot here. Click and drag to get that, that curve. Uh, click on the anchor point. Go down to the liquid. And then now I need to... Um, uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a white rim, so I probably shouldn't go too far down. You go just above it, just a little bit, curve that, and let's see if I can, yeah, I can. That's good right there. Go to the edge, curve it, perfect. Click on there, click on this, and that's it. If you make any mistakes and it doesn't work, then you click on the white arrow, the direct selection tool, you can click, you can click again, and you can drag it. So you can reshape it. You can also change the angle. Once you click on an anchor, it will show you the it should show you the handles that are available, and you can reshape it. But click on the handle, drag it, shorten it, lengthen it, and it will change the curve of the handle. This one right here, if I zoom in, there's something uh, there are some shortcuts here. If you click and you drag, this will zoom into that shape. If I click and then drag on the anchor point and I click and drag over, it is now moving that anchor point over. Click and drag it over, so I click twice. I can reshape that. How do I go back? Command minus. The command zero will bring the whole picture back into view. So I just uh, command zero brings it back into here so I can see the whole thing. I don't want to zoom out that far because I want a little bit more visibility and make sure I'm doing this correctly. <clears throat> Zooming in, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. I'm going to select this. I'm going to fill that in with that color. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down to, oh, I didn't uh, define this. It says it's still a radial. We could try a linear gradient um, in this case. That's fine. Um, that dark color, that's fairly dark. I might go ahead and delete one of these, like on this end here. And let's go ahead and select, uh, because you'll notice that the, the lighting, it gets lighter and lighter on this side. It's darker over there. I'm going to go ahead and get the eyedropper tool and select this color. Drag it down to the gradient and go ahead and use the eyedropper and select maybe another color and bring it down to the gradient. So it's going from uh, dark to light. All right, getting this selection tool or the move tool. Some people call it the move tool. Just drag it down into position. Uh, we, can, we can change the opacity of this if you wanted to. Uh, that might make it a little bit more transparent, and that might be one thing you want to do. There are other things that you can do uh, in Adobe Illustrator, um, which I haven't talked about, and that's using the effects and uh, softening the edges and rasterizing this image. But this is supposed to be a vector image. All right, let's see what we have here for the... Um, uh, for, for our design. So looking at all that we've done so far, okay, not too bad. Things don't quite line up here, just quite right. So if I go to the coffee layer, I can see that, I can undo that, I can move this over um, so that it's over just a bit. Um, again, layer order is important. So if the coffee is above the inside of the cup or on so on and so forth, then it might cause problems. Um, let's go ahead and move that just a little bit. 
also want to move this one, but again, this is locked. So I may want to click on it, unlock it, and move it down just a bit. So if this layer is just a little bit behind or below it, then some of these um, overlaps won't show uh, when, you, when you do this. Uh, for example, if I put the cup on top, then it would hide some of this and you don't have to have it lined up perfectly. Um, and again, I can see, well, that's probably the original cup. There we go. So right here with this one here, if I'd use the direct selection tool, I'll click on this the second time, move it just a bit. I can get that to line up a little bit closer. I just don't want any white showing. Uh, this is in the way right now. So right now this one is showing. I want that over just a bit and double click on it and move that over there. That's a little bit better. So you get the idea of what you can do um, on recreating items. All right. Going back to our layers, I must have moved something because I can see the handle's not lined up either. So I'll have to work on that just a little bit. I wanted to work on something else. So let's do um, Command-0 to show the whole cup. There are a few more things that we need to do. There's the shading of the handle that we need to put in, uh, and as well as a few more things. So let's do that. For create a new layer, this is uh, this layer is going underneath there. So handle shadow, sure. There we go. Uh, let's lock some of these others. I'm on a handle handle shadow, and I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and go to it. And um, this is what it looks like. Again, this, this one is fairly simple uh, as compared to the others. I'm going to go to the pen tool. You could use the pencil tool because it's not a precise drawing. So if I go down, for example, uh, to, the, um, to the pencil tool, Hold on here just a little bit. Uh, I'll just use the. Uh, okay, we'll go to the pencil tool, which is under the shaper tool in my case here. I'm going to just go ahead and draw the shape just a little bit roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a shadow. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, select this, and should zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the opacity of this. Change the opacity of this just a little bit uh, down. So it should, looks a little bit more like uh, a, sh uh, a shadow. Again, I could go up to effects and change that. Um, under effects, there's... Um, there's stylized drop shadow is a possibility. There's some other ones as well. Um, but I'm just trying to make this simple. But those are ras raster effects, which are available, some of them, as you can see, in Photoshop uh, as well. So I'm just doing that. Uh, I changed the opacity down. That looks OK. Um, we're also going to go ahead and create click off of it so that it doesn't look quite like that. This needs to be behind the handle. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down below the handle just a bit so it's not visible. So you see how that hides that. And if it's below the cup as well, um, then that's going to hide there as well. So now that looks better. It kind of blends in. I kind of feel that it needs to be maybe even lighter than it was there. So I'm going to go ahead and change that down just a bit more. So there we have a little bit of a shadow. If you want to change this, you get the direct selection tool, you can click on it, you can move the handles just a bit so that that covers that portion, not a problem. There we have a little bit of a handle. If I zoom out, maybe it'll look a little bit better. If you zoom, zoom out a whole bunch, maybe it'll look even better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and create this little a bottom 
portion here and then the almost done with this uh, cup. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And this layer, so layer nine, I'm going to double click and call it the saucer shadow. All right, from here, lock this layer. I'm going to go ahead and create this shape. Again, if I wanted to, I could use, well, I think I will use just the pen tool in this case. I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to click on the pen tool, select this portion here, uh, go across. If I go all the way, I might get in trouble, but it is nice to be able to. And since I'm zoomed in so much, it's hard to get that shape. And I can't see it because maybe that'll work. Let me do a command minus, which means I'm backing away from it. Ah, not too bad, is it? All right. I'm going to go ahead and d delete the fill, excuse me, and make sure that there is a black stroke so that I can see what I'm doing. So let's do it this way. A black stroke and no fill. Okay, so to continue on with this, I'm going to click on the anchor point, go back to the original anchor point, click and drag, and line that up. So that's another way of, instead of creating um, an oval, I'm now doing it this way. Uh, use the eyedropper tool, click and select that, fill that color, not a problem. Again, if I want to, this doesn't have to match up perfectly because I can put this below the saucer and it would not show. Okay, I want to see what I'm doing. Um, so let's extend this down. I've created a lot of layers this uh, in this exercise. Um, and let's hide the original. If we go ahead and deselect that, we can see the shape and you can see that it doesn't line up. Uh, so if I go ahead and zoom in here, I can go ahead and select that, click on it, click it again, move it over. There we are. That works. Command minus. And I can see what I've done. Command zero. Bring that whole shape in there. That's good. So I have one more thing that I need to create. If you look carefully, this has a little bit of a shadow underneath. So let's go ahead and do that last step here. And I'm going to go ahead and select uh, this layer. And I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. Oh, I better zoom in to this portion here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool, uh, select this, go halfway instead of the whole way this time, select there, click on the anchor point. Click over to this side here, move it, yep, that's good, except I have a fill that now I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and go back through. So if I go to there, I'm not sure I'll be able to make that curve. So I'll go ahead and do this and click on the anchor point. Finally, click on the last anchor point, go there, select the eyedropper tool, select this color. And that's a little bit dark, uh, probably needs to be a little bit lighter on the left-hand side. So I could use a gradient on that. Let me go to a linear gradient. I'm going to uh, delete one of these here. Um, okay, may, let me get a lighter color and try and match this shading that's on the left-hand side here. All right, so I'm going to drag this down to the gradient slider up and select that one, delete it. Good, that looks better. Move this into position. Good, perfect. Okay, move this out of the way and let's see what our final rendition is. Not a masterpiece, but it's doing pretty well. Let's see what we have. If you click and you scroll up there, it'll make everything visible. You can hide layer one, and I can see where I have a little bit of a problem here. One more time, 
I recommend that you go through and you check those parts. I might have to grade you off on it, even though I didn't do the perfect job. Uh, I just want to show you some of the basics. So click over there, hide that. That looks pretty good. Yep. And let's see what we have. Let's command zero. All right. We've done the, the, the whole thing there. That's the process. Hope you've enjoyed uh, learning how to use the tools. Oops, 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 oops. I, that bothers me. Can't let that go. Looks like that uh, handle is about ready to break off. Let me go back to here and select it with the direct selection tool and move that. Again, if that is in a certain sequence, I can put this behind, behind the actual cup and then that won't show. So let me drag that below and let's see what that did. Um, yeah, if I click off of there, see, lines up perfectly. That's because I hit it behind the actual cup itself. So those little tips and tricks makes it a little easier. I recommend that you use the, those uh, tricks. Uh, this is a guide. If you want to hide the guides, you go to View, Guides, and you can hide the guides or clear guides to see what your final product is. Hope you enjoyed this. And that's the end of this lesson. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. Hopefully I can 